Located in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Corkin was founded in 1924 as a water pump distributor. In the early 1940s, the company entered the liquid gas industry and quickly gained market recognition for its quality line of pumps. Corkin now has over 50 years experience in the design and manufacture of liquefied gas pumps and is recognized as a world leader. Another key to Corkin's success is its strong commitment to product training. Over the years, Corkin has held product training seminars all over the world. This training video will explain in detail the proper procedures for disassembly and assembly of the Z-model Corovane truck pump. The topics covered are safety tips, disassembly, assembly, troubleshooter's guide, tools required for disassembly and assembly, guidelines for installation, and guidelines for proper bypass valve settings. Safety tips. One, periodic inspection and maintenance of cork and pumps is essential. Two, inspection, maintenance, and installation of cork and pumps must be made only by experienced, trained, and qualified personnel. Three, maintenance, use, and installation of cork and pumps must comply with cork and instructions, applicable codes, and safety standards. Four, Transfer of toxic, dangerous, flammable, or explosive substances using Corkin products is at the user's risk, and equipment should be operated only by qualified personnel according to applicable codes and safety standards. Be sure to obtain and review all applicable instruction books and service manual pages before starting any of the following maintenance procedures. This video is on the maintenance and repair of the Z-Series pumps. This specific pump is a Z3200, but the pumps and parts and procedures are the same for the Z2000 and Z4200. Normal maintenance is only the lubricating of the bearings. This should be done every two to three months or as frequently as the truck is lubricated. Remember the, to lubricate the bearings and slip joints of the pump PTO drive shaft. Use a low temperature ball bearing grease similar to Corkin part number 2302. Clean the grease fittings before lubrication. Be sure the relief is free to move on the bottom of the bearing cap prior to lubrication. The second relief fitting is where a seal leak would appear. Before disassembly, and there's a seal leak. If you'll inspect the bearings by being sure there's no movement in the shaft, if there's no movement, then the only thing necessary to remove will be the head assembly. The bearing area can stay complete. Okay, to begin with, we're going to show the procedure for the seal change. The seal's the same on both sides of the pump. Before disassembly, check the shaft for movement. Be sure to uh, check if there's any movement. It's necessary to change the main bearings during the seal change. If there's no movement, it's not necessary to remove the bearing cap area or the bearings themselves. To begin with, again, we're going to remove the head bolts, being sure before any maintenance is done that the pump has been depressurized. Remove all head bolts and lay aside before removal. After removal of the bolts, while holding in on the pump shaft, remove the head assembly and set aside. Next, you'll want to remove the O-ring from the head and clean the area around the casing and head assembly before reassembly. Remove the spring and carbon from the shaft and set aside. 
clean the shaft area before the reinstalling of the new spring and carbon assembly. Next, we'll invert the head on the bench, insert a screwdriver through the head, and lightly tap out the seal seat. This is the metal seal seat portion of the mechanical seal. It needs to be removed and discarded. You'll also note on the inside of the head assembly a lip seal on the internal part. It may be necessary to inspect and replace that lip seal assembly, which again, you invert the head using a screwdriver. You lightly tap out the lip seal assembly. And change and install a new seal. The lip seal assembly comes with a new mechanical seal. And before installing the parts, you want to be sure and clean the internal area of the head. OK, again, after the cleaning of the inside of the head assembly, to reinstall the new lip seal, be sure that it's positioned to where the lip is towards the seal seat. Position it in the head. Using the old seal seat, remove the O-ring from the outside so it fits loosely in the head. And it will be used to lightly tap in the lip seal. Again, lightly tapping in. Once the lip seal has been installed, remove the old seal seat. Again, cleaning out the head area. Getting your new seal seat assembly. Lightly lubricating the outside, installing the seal seat in, using the protective cardboard disc, gently press in using just finger pressure. Once the seal seat has been installed, you'll go back and use the spring assembly and carbon to be installed on the shaft. Again, after you've installed the seal seat, it's necessary to install the carbon and spring assembly. There is an alignment point where it's necessary to line up the notch in the spring retainer assembly with the pin on the shaft. The pin on the shaft should be aligned in line with the keyway. To install the spring, again, install the spring by itself. It should fit loosely on the shaft. Next, you would take the carbon with the carbon O-ring lightly lubricating with some spray lubricant or WD-40, installing it over the spring retainer. Once that's been done, you'll go to installing the O-ring on the head assembly, again cleaning the head assembly and the casing to be sure there's no dirt or debris. Install the O-ring over the head. Lightly lubricate the seal faces to rinse off any dirt or debris that may have uh, accumulated. And carefully install the head assembly over the shaft, watching that the shaft does not hit the seal seat. Install the head bolts. Tighten the head bolts in a crossing pattern. It's not necessary to torque, but do be sure the bolts are tightened. And before pressurization, always rotate the pump shaft to align seals. 
and always remember to pressure with vapor. If it's um, on a tank that's mounted with an internal type valve, it may be necessary to allow a small amount of liquid to enter the pump, closing the valve to let the liquid then vaporize. Tighten bolts. Again, in a crossing pattern. And pressurize the pump slowly after rotating and pressure with vapor. The pump should be able to rotate and be sure to lubricate the pump before putting back into service. If the pump is going to be put onto the shelf for storage, it's wise to protectively coat the inside of the pump with a light oil uh, spray lubricant and then cap off all openings. That's all that's necessary in the seal change in the Z-Series pumps. If, if it's necessary to go into the pump further for further maintenance or repairs, we'll continue the video showing that part. To do a complete rebuild on a Z-Series pump, <clears throat> it's necessary to disassemble the entire pump to repair the internals. You would again remove the head assembly, setting it aside, removing the carbon spring assembly from the shaft. This gives you access to the inside of the pump, removing the wear plate, if it's only necessary to inspect blades, it would be possible then to remove a blade for inspection and reinstall, or as the pump is rotated, you could change one blade at a time. If the entire pump is going to be disassembled, it's easier to leave the side plate on while you remove the head assembly from the opposite side Again, remo removing the bolts from the outside diameter while holding the pump shaft and the casing, you would remove the second head assembly and set aside. It's now possible to remove the rotor shaft assembly along with all the blades and the wear plates or side plates. The side plates are flat, can be reversed for dual usage. If there's light scoring, uh, it's possible to reuse or completely change out and reverse. The wear plates or side plates on both sides are the same. You can then remove the rotor shaft assembly along with all the blades, inspect the blades and the pins, which come in a new kit. Also, the cam can be slid out if necessary. A uh, piece of wood or a mallet can be used to drive the cam assembly from the casing. The cam should be installed properly with the large openings or the inlet side to the inlet side of the pump and the outlet to the outlet side of the pump. Be sure on the reinstallation that the cam is properly installed into the pump casing. Next we're going to talk about the bearing area in each head assembly. <clears throat> First you'll need to remove the bearing cap bolts. This is again only necessary if um, the shaft shows signs of movement or you're doing a complete rebuild where you want to change all the parts. You want to remove all the bearing cap bolts. 
and then the bearing cap will come off. You'll note colored shims. These shims are used for adjusting the thrust bearing clearance. Normally you'll just replace the shims that came on the existing pump when you reassemble, keeping the same shims along to the same side. If you need to completely rebuild the pump and begin shimming over, we'll discuss that at a later point during the reassembly of the pump. Next you'll notice the thrust bearing along with the thrust bearing mounting ring. Again, these parts come in both the repair kit and the rebuild kit. The only remaining part in the head assembly is the main shaft bearing and it can be removed by <clears throat> removing the spiral snap ring and driving the bearing out from the reverse side. To reassemble you would then place the bearing, inserting the bearing into the shaft and reinstall the retainer assembly. It is uh, possible to pre-pack the bearing although it's not absolutely necessary. Once the pump's rebuilt, uh, if you grease the pump properly, it'll uh, grease the bearings adequately. Now we're going to begin the process of the reassemble. The first thing you need to do is install the cam. <clears throat> Again, assuring that the inlet side is towards the inlet and the outlet side is towards the outlet. In this case, the inlet's on the bottom, the outlet's on the top. You'll notice the cam key and it is required to get your alignment. The cam may be necessary to be lightly tapped in either using a, a mallet or a, a piece of wood. It needs to be installed approximately the middle of the casing for assembly purposes. Next you'll take the rotor shaft assembly installing three blades, noting the direction of rotation on the pump. It's important that the blades are installed to where the front edge of the blade picks up the liquid in rotation. In this case, this pump rotates in a counterclockwise direction, so the blades would be installed with the notch to the leading edge. So now we'll install the blades in this direction. Install three blades this is just to assist in keeping the pins <clears throat> in the rotor and shaft assembly during installation. Install the three pins or drivers. Now laying the rotor shaft assembly inside the cam. Next, you can install the remaining blades, again noting direction of rotation, rotation being counterclockwise. So the leading edge of the blade is again, rotations this way, the leading edge of the blade is coming from this direction. You want to make sure the blades are properly installed. Next you'll install the side plate or wear plate on one side. It's easier to use a bolt. <clears throat> Noting again where the key is, install the side plate on one side of the pump, aligning with the key. Then you install the other side plate, which will then support the rotor shaft assembly along with the blades. You can hold the rotor shaft assembly in place with one hand while installing the side plate with the other. Noting the key to lock the side plate in position. Now removing the bolts that were used to assist in the installation of the side plates. You are now prepared to install the mechanical seal assembly and the head assembly on one side of the pump. <clears throat> Again, cleaning the shaft off before any seal assembly is installed. 
preparing for the installation of the head assembly. Again, now you're ready to install the head assemblies and seal assemblies. Once again, noting the pin and notch location, install the spring assembly over the shaft, being sure the alignment is proper, taking the carbon, lubricating the carbon and the carbon o-ring lightly with a spray lubricant or light oil, compressing it on and rinsing off with again a spray, spray lubricant uh, or light, light lubricating oil, being sure that the head o-ring has been installed the uh, corner in the, in the head and the casing has been cleaned before the installation of the head assembly, taking care that during installation that you don't damage the metal seal seat against the shaft. Install the head assembly over the pump shaft. Now installing all the head bolts. And again, tightening head bolts in a cross torquing pattern. Being sure all bolts are tight before continuing. Now we're ready to talk about installing the thrust bearing uh, assembly. Again, if the pump is just being rebuilt, you would normally reinstall the same shims that came on each side. Just reinstall what came on the pump. If you're wanting to rebuild a pump or use new parts, uh, it may be necessary to recheck the shims. The way that's done is by installing the thrust bearing assembly, starting with the mounting ring over the shaft, installing the thrust bearing along with the two thrust washers, <coughs> and installing the bearing cap with no shims installed over the shaft and bolting down just with light finger pressure. After the bolts have been installed, you then check the clearance between the bearing cap and the main head. On the first side, you would check what the clearance is and add a total of six thousandths on the second side, you would check the bearing clearance and add a total of two thousandths. So in this case, it is the second side. So we're looking for the clearance and the pump. In this case, it's approximately 20 thousandths. So we would add a total of 22 thousandths worth of shims. The shims are color coded, the yellow shim being 20 thousandths, the brown shim being 10, and the red shim being two. So in this case, we'll install a yellow shim, which is 20, and a, green, a red shim, which is 2, for a total of 22 thousandths clearance. That will set the rotor into a floating position to keep it from rubbing against the side plates. Once the shims have been installed and the bearing cap is re <coughs> reinstalled, you tighten the bolts down to a torque of approximately 25 foot-pounds. Again, tightening bolts in a crossing pattern. Once the, pattern, once the bolt bearing caps have been tightened, you would rotate the pump to assure that the, it is free turning, and then lubricate the pump before putting it into service. The pump should be free to turn, being careful not to cut your hands on the keyway, rotate the pump. Before pressurization, again, you want to rotate the pump and pressurize with vapor. If the pump's going to be stored for any extended period of time, put some kind of a light oil or spray a spray lubricant inside the pump and cap for long-term storage. To redefine the proper shimming of a new pump, you begin with the 
first side by tightening the bearing cap down by hand, checking the clearance between the bearing cap and the head, whatever that clearance is, adding a total of six thousandths more, going to the second side, tightening the bearing cap down by hand, checking the clearance and installing a total of two thousandths more. As an example, if the first side had a clearance of eighteen thousandths, you would make a total of twenty-four thousandths worth of shims. The second side you would then add two thousandths to whatever that clearance might be, which could be twenty-four thousandths, you would give it a total of twenty-six thousandths worth of shims. That would give you the proper clearance of the internal rotor. We now want to talk about the internal safety relief on the pump. Normally this pump, this part of the pump doesn't require maintenance, although it is a good idea to inspect this, uh, this area. It is a safety relief, not a bypass valve. Its purpose is solely for the protection of the pump from overpressurization. The best way to inspect it is being careful. You remove two bolts from opposite sides of the bearing cap. Once those bolts are removed, you would then use either an all thread or a longer bolt as this plate will be sp under spring pressure. You can use something similar to a shipping carriage bolt or an all thread, installing them in the opposite sides. Then removing the other two bolts, which will then let you slowly relieve the spring tension on the relief valve. Again, taking care to use either all threads or a longer bolt to relieve the spring tension. Once this has been achieved, you would then inspect the bearing or the relief valve area for any signs of wear or rust. If um, this area has uh, rust or the relief valve itself is stuck in the casing, it's necessary to clean that area up either with a wire brush or some type of emery. If there's any signs of wear uh, between the relief valve or the seat of the casing itself, this is a sign of overpressuring normally caused by excessive bypass setting uh, or running the pump at an excessive pressure. Again, after the removal of the cap and the spring, you'll find the relief valve itself should show no signs of wear in the seat area or inside the casing. If there's indications of some type of wear in this area, that would be an indication of overpressurization. To reinstall this, you would then clean this area up, reinstall the seat and the spring and the bearing cap, and again, using the extended bolts, this would give you access to be able to compress the spring slowly during the assembly process. This can be done again with either carriage bolts, all thread, or just a longer bolt using the cross corners to get the cap and spring tightened enough to be able to install the standard standard length bolts. There is an O-ring that seals between this plate and the casing. If you ever have a leak between the plate and the casing, it would be the O-ring. Uh, that does come in both the repair kit and the rebuild kit. Uh, you would just 
reinstall and clean those surface areas before the installation of the relief valve cap. Tightening the relief valve cap in an even manner slowly compresses the spring. It is preset from the factory and requires no adjustment. And that's all that's required for inspection of the relief valve. When you get a repair kit, you get six blades, two mechanical seal assemblies that include the two grease seals for between the bearing and a mechanical seal. You also get two grease seals for the outside of the shaft. You get three pins for inside the rotor, two main shaft bearing assemblies, all of the O-rings for inside the pump, two thrust bearing mounting rings along with the two thrust bearings. You also get adjustment shims to each of the 20 thousandths, 10 thousandths, and 2 thousandths thrust bearing shims. That all comes in a repair kit. A rebuild kit gets everything included in a repair kit, but it also includes the cam and the side plates. So in a rebuild kit, you would get the cam, the two side plates, along with the six blades, the two mechanical seals with the grease seals that go between the mechanical seal and the bearing, the two grease seals for the main shaft, the three pins, the two main shaft bearing assemblies, all the O-rings for the pumps, the two thrust, <coughs> thrust bearing mounting rings along with the two thrust bearings, and again, two of each of the thrust bearing shims, the 2000s, 10,000s, and 20,000s thrust bearing shims are all included in a rebuild kit. This completes the process of the rebuilding of the Z-Series pumps. Again, this being an example of a Z3200, but the process is the same whether it be a 2000, 3200 series or 4200 series pump. When diagnosing pump and system troubles, Record the following data during product transfers. Pressure at pump suction. Pressure at pump discharge. Pressure in truck tank. Pressure in tank being filled. Pipe size and length of suction and discharge lines. Size and length of vapor equalizing line. And pump speed. Problem, low capacity. Cause, pump speed too slow. What to do? Confirm pump speed. Consult pump performance curve. Cause, high differential pressure. What to do? Restriction in discharge piping or hose too small. Vapor equalization lines too small are not used. Remove restriction or modify piping. Cause, external bypass valve is leaking through, stuck open, or set too low. What to do? Readjust, repair, or replace valve. Cause, clogged strainer or internal valve screen. What to do? Clean strainer or back flush internal valve. Cause, suction pipe too small or restricted. What to do? Remove restriction or modify piping. Cause, worn blades or veins. What to do? Replace. Problem, low capacity. Cause, pump without vapor return. What to do? Without vapor equalization, a pump can remove only about 3% of the truck tank capacity per minute without severe cavitation and capacity loss. Cause, worn side plated. What to do? Reverse or replace side plates. Check universal drive assembly to make sure angularity is within limits. Yokes are parallel and slip joint is greased. Check bearings. Cause, blades or veins are sticking. What to do? 
remove the blades or veins and clear out foreign matter. Check the strainer. Replace the blades or veins if necessary. Problem. Pump runs but no flow. Cause. Valve closed. What to do? Check valve. Make sure internal tank excess flow valve is open. Refer to manufacturer's instructions. Cause, excess flow valve slugged. What to do? Stop pump until valve opens. If problem continues, slow pump down or install new or larger excess flow valve. Cause, broken shaft. What to do? Disassemble and inspect pump. Repair if necessary. Cause, defective meter. What to do? Service the meter. Problem. Pump won't turn. Locked up. Cause, foreign matter in pump. What to do? Clean out the pump. Check strainer in suction and discharge lines. Cause, blades broken. What to do? Clean out pump carefully and replace blades or veins. Has pump been operated dry? Then check for damage to cam and rotor shaft assembly. Cause, bearing seized. What to do? Replace pump bearings. Grease monthly. Use ball bearing grease manufactured for intended service. Cause, moisture frozen in pump. What to do? Let thaw and break loose carefully. Add alcohol to the tank on LP gas. Check with product supplier about the possibility of water in gas. Problem. Will not build pressure. Cause. Poor suction conditions. What to do? Clean inlet strainer. Increase pipe size. Cause. External bypass valve is set too low. What to do? Set valve for higher pressure. See instructions. Cause. Worn blades or veins and or side plates. What to do? Disassemble, inspect, and repair as necessary. Problem. Pump is noisy. The cause? Cavitation from poor suction conditions. What to do? Clean inlet strainer. Increase pipe size. Cause? Blades or veins sticking. What to do? Remove blades or veins and clean out foreign material. Replace blades or veins if necessary. Cause bearings worn. What to do? Replace if necessary. Grease monthly or during truck maintenance. Cause very high differential pressure. What to do? Check for restriction and discharge line. Delivery hose too small and too long. Slow down the pump. Cause. PTO shaft vibration. What to do? Inspect and repair driveline components. Problem. Pump leaks around the shaft. Cause. Seal or O-rings failed. What to do? Inspect seal assembly and replace if necessary. Keep new seal very clean. A light oil film is recommended for sealing surfaces prior to installation. Storage of Z-Model Corovane Truck Pumps. If your cork and Z-Model pump is to be removed from service for some time, the pump must be protected as propane, butane, and anhydrous ammonia all leave the metal bare and open to corrosion. Piping and tanks not in service should also be protected as the rust particles can destroy the pump seals almost immediately after startup. First, fill or thoroughly flush the pump with a light rust inhibiting oil. If the pump is flushed with oil, placing some desiccant packet inside the pump will provide added protection. Second, plug all pump openings. Third, store in a dry location. Four, before placing the pump back into service, drain the oil and remove any desiccant packets. Fifth, refer to the operation of your pump system section of the manual. 
tools required for disassembly and assembly of the pump. A one half inch drive socket set. Thickness gauge set. Number two flathead screwdriver. Emery cloth, 320 to 400 grit. Light oil or spray lubricant. Guidelines for installations. Refer to the Z model Coro Vane pump installation book. Number ID 105. Guide for bypass valve settings. Refer to instruction book and bypass valves. Corkin is committed to providing product training for its distributors and end users. For additional product literature or training videos, contact Corkin Incorporated, Post Office Box 12338, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, zip 73157. Or you may reach us at our email address or visit our website.